Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com and today we're continuing our coverage of the 2018 World Chess Championships between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. Today we're in game number eight. Fabiano's playing the white pieces. Magnus is defending with the black pieces. We'll go ahead and get started with pawn to e4, pawn c5, the Sicilian offense, what Magnus Carlsen has been going to each and every time he sees pawn to e4. Knight to f3, knight c6, and then this is where things start to get a little bit different because we're used to seeing bishop to b5, but in the game we see more of the main line with pawn to d4. Pawn takes here, knight captures, knight down here to f6, knight to c3, and then pawn to e5. This is the Lasker Pelican variation, something we don't see all too that often. But right away in move number six, white has a very critical move, and that is knight to b5. Now, very rarely do you see a critical move this early, but if you're not familiar with this opening, this really is the, the key move here. If you think about other places where white can go to, maybe the knight takes here on a c6, the pawn recaptures here. Uh, black now has all the center pawns. He can start to push forward, really control, get equality very easy. If instead we see something like knight to b3, then bishop down here b4, this is pinning down the knight to the king. This knight is the piece that's defending this pawn here on e4. This knight can freely attack this. White's going to have to move suboptimally just to defend this piece. So what this knight here on b5 does is, you know, if the bishop were now to come down to uh, b4, can play just pawn to a3, forcing the bishop to move. If the bishop now wants to take, the knight can recapture here on c3. So this is really the only place that you see now at high level play that white's going to move to, and that is knight to b5. Pawn to a d6, knight up here to d5, and there's a couple options. The main line here is for the bishop to come here to g5, way less common is knight coming up here to d5. So nice to see Fabiano going outside normal book lines. Uh, knight captures here on d5, really needs to capture here. White is threatening the fork up here on c7 and it's protected by the other knight here on d5. So Magnus takes with his knight, the pawn recaptures here, knight comes back here to b8. Magnus if he wants to, he could also come to e7, uh, but also wants to get his bishop involved into the game so he can castle on the king side. So he opts for playing the knight back here to b8 and then moving it over here to d7 so it can come to an outpost here on c5. Or if he wants to swing over here to the king side of the board, he can do that as well. Fabiano continues with pawn to a4 and then bishop to e7, get ready to castle on the king side. I thought we might see pawn to a6. Fabiano's really pushing on the queen side, not really worried about too much on the king side right now. This knight on b5 is a problem. It's attacking the backward pawn here on d6, and it's really just cramping the style that black has on the queen side of the board. But instead, we see bishop here to e7. Bishop e2, both sides castle. Uh, knight here to d7. So wants to open up the opportunity to get this knight involved into the into the game, wherever he wants to. Bishop here to d2, just wants to activate the bishop. Uh, also wants to be able to push forward here to a5 and still control that with his bishop. Also has his rook back here on a1. And then Magnus Carlsen plays pawn to f5. Uh, so this is really aggressive for Magnus on the king side of the board, recognizing that all right, Fabiano's already pushed on the queen side. It's going to be tough to counterattack right now, so he decides to push forward on the king side of the board. Now pawn to a5 as we talked about. And now we see the pawn to a6. White has a couple options. You could come back here to c3. This does block off his uh, bishop here on d2 from defending. He still has his rook here on a1. But he comes back here to a3 because this does open up the door to maneuver his knight here to c4 and then up here to b6. This is a great outpost, another reason he wants the pawn here on a5. Uh, and he can block his own rook off because he brought his bishop here to d2. 
Pawn here to e4, just trying to push over here on the king side. Needs to get more space and do something, or white's going to just dominate the queen side of the board. Knight here to c4, as we talked about. Uh, knight to e5, just a great outpost in the center of the board. Knight to b6, attacking the rook. Rook has to move. So rook to uh, b8, f4. Uh, so this is just attacking the knight in the center of the board. Black pretty much has to take here. And this is a move called en passant. If you haven't seen him before, if you're new to chess, this is a legal move. Once you're on the, the fourth row here uh, for black and your opponent moves their pawn two squares next to you, you have one and only chance to actually take right here. That is the legal move. Madness Carlson did play that in the game. Bishop recaptures here on F3. And then pawn to G5. And this is pretty interesting. No one expected Madness Carlson to play this. Uh, if you are watching uh, commentary or you are following on Twitter, you know, all the grandmasters are giving their feedback on this game. Uh, Nakamura actually said that this is, did not feel like a Magnus Carlsen move, thought that it was a mistake, just pushing too much in front of his own king here without a real strong attack that he can go to. So it just comes down to can Fabiano find a strong enough attack here to continue and come up with a victory. Now we see pawn to c4, f4 from Magnus Carlsen, bishop up here to c3 and then bishop to f5 and this is a critical place in the game if you start to look at what fabiano's trying to do here this knight in the center of the board is a crucial square there's no pawn in the center and all the pawns in front of the king have really pushed forward so this knight feels like a, a huge piece as far as black's defense here so there's a couple ways to attack this one of the best ways is to play a move that's going to get rid of this defender here on d6 fabiano spent over 30 minutes on this move and then played pawn to c5 trying to chip away at the defense here on d6 now madness carlson staring at the board just as long uh, as fabiano was trying to figure out his move uh, then decided, yeah, the only way to really respond here is to start gobbling up material. He recognizes he's in a tough position. Fabiano has all the advantage as far as being aggressive on board, so he needs to just start exchanging material. Queen takes back here on F3. The pawn takes, and then the rook swings over here to D1. So yes, white gave up some material here, but he is definitely the aggressor. He has two very active rooks here. His bishop is eyeing down his opponent's king side of the board. His knight outpost here, it's blocking both of the rook moves right now. It's also just a pain in the side for Magnus Carlsen to have to deal with. So after rook to d1, we see bishop here to d6. Now, as we've talked about before, there's always chess engines going on during these games, uh, both to help the commentators uh, go through different positions and see if what they're telling the audience makes sense, but also for the average fan to be able to watch and see what are some of the options that they could see from the grandmasters. You can even put in your own lines to see what the supercomputers think, much more advanced than just normal software you would be running at home if you were trying to follow along. Some of the supercomputers in this position said that Fabiano was up almost two pawns in material. Uh, now, that's just their rating system. Uh, even though if you count the material up, you'd see that Magnus Carlsen is ahead. As far as the advantage, mostly because of the position uh, and the attacking opportunities that Fabiano has, they say that he has a huge, huge advantage. In this spot, they recommend queen to h5. Really, everyone said that Fabiano had to stay aggressive. If you're going to give up material and you have all this material pointing down at your opponent, you have to stay aggressive. That's exactly what queen to h5 does. Unfortunately, that's not what Fabiano does. He plays the quiet move pawn to h3. Something that I think is fine uh, if you're looking at this early in the game and you're trying to stop your opponent coming down here to g4, many times with their bishop trying to pin down your knight on f3, or their knight comes to f6 and then it can come down here to g4. That makes sense for h3. But I feel like he needed to be more aggressive in this spot. Queen to e8. Knight comes back here to c4. Also don't like, yes, it is attacking the bishop, but just don't like 
retreating the material needs to be very aggressive in this spot queen down here to g6 the knight takes there is an exchange on the board pawn up here to h4 so moving two uh you know using two of his moves to just push this pawn up here to h4 we do see the pawn take yes this was defending this pawn right here fabiano looking for the exchange right here with his queens that's exactly what madness carlson does Pawn down here to h5, rook to e1, bishop down to g4, just an outpost also stopping the rook from coming over here to h4, taking this material. Double pawns on either the h or the a file, they're going to be hard to hold on to the entire game, but it does stop it momentarily. Rook up here to f6, defended by the bishop on c3, so it is safe, but we do see an exchange. You can see both sides starting to just trade off all the material. It was not too long ago that the supercomputer thought Fabiano had a really good game. All of his major pieces ready for an attack, and he played that pawn to h3. Bishop comes to h4, takes the material, uh, so if you look at it, both sides equal in material, getting into the end game. Rook over here to f1. A few more moves uh, from here. Both sides not going to be able to do anything. Uh, rook to g6. Pawn up here to d6. And then rook to d2. Do not want to capture material here. Uh, yes, the bishop is defending the square here on d7. But then rook could take on g4. Pawn could take. And after pawn to d7, uh, black would have lost. No way to stop this. Uh, so in the game, that's not what we saw. We see Rook to D2, kind of the last opportunity that Fabiano saw. Rook down to G5. And after 38 moves, both players decide to go ahead and draw for the eighth consecutive game. So we have four games left. I'm personally hoping for not four more draws. But if we do, we will have tiebreakers after that. Get some bonus chests in. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. As far as all the games so far, this has been my favorite. I feel like they opened up. Fabiano had a lot of chances. I uh, just think he needed to be more aggressive at the end. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in two days. We do have a break tomorrow. So I'll see you in two days for game number nine.